Hey everyone, I'm back and today we're going to be talking about Superman 4 The Quest for Peace. And this movie is regarded as one of the worst movies ever made and it came out in 1987. And this is the first time I've ever watched this film. And I gotta say, this movie lives up to the hype, <laughs> if you know what I mean. In the sense that it's terrible, but it's kind of funny. Like, unintentionally funny. I hate the comedy. Like, any attempts at intentional humor, I hate. But unintentional comedy, th there's some golden moments in this film. <laughs> <laughs> and the only positives, really, that I have for this movie is that I still like seeing Christopher Reeve as Superman. And Gene Hackman was fun to watch, although not as entertaining as he was in 1 and 2. But, you know, it's nice to see those two together on screen. They don't ruin the movie. Well, except for uh, one element of Gene Hackman's performance, uh, him dubbing over Nuclear Man for literally no reason. <laughs> I don't know why that had to happen, but yeah, the effects in this movie look terrible. There's a noticeable of blue screens in the background in basically every VFX shot, and everyone looks like they're in front of a blue screen the entire time, and there are points uh, where it just looks so incredibly cheap <laughs> that it just looks hilarious to me. And the action scenes in this movie basically saved the movie for me. And when I say saves, it makes it a watchable, funny, bad movie. Like, this movie is not long at all. It's an hour and a half. And so you can put it on and just kind of laugh at it and tear it apart. <laughs> Nothing in this movie makes any sense whatsoever, and there are so many things that you can just think about for, like, ten seconds, but once you start to do that, you'll realize, I'm missing information about the movie that I could be absorbing or being ready to talk about, <laughs> which I'm always taking notes while watching movies, so I wasn't really losing anything, but... There's just so much in this movie that you can just tear apart. And I'm not even going to go over the plot holes of this movie all too much because I don't want to take up too much time. And also that kind of adds to the humor to the film. <laughs> Nuclear Man in this movie is hilarious. I loved every second with this character on screen. <laughs> I love his roars. I love his attacks. I love what he <laughs> does in the film. <laughs> <laughs> and how the film treats him. I like how his uh, symbol is basically just a sun with an N in the middle of it. That was pretty funny. There's a lot of bad performances in this movie, and uh, there's plenty of characters that can easily be cut out of the movie. Like, they just don't need to be there. Like, the Daily Planet being taken over by this uh, one guy. I don't even remember his name, and... Uh, pointless. Cut that out. Uh, Clark Kent and Lucy had, like, a little thing going on. Well, Clark Kent wasn't really interested, but uh, she was. That was pointless and could have been cut out of the movie. I guess I'll just uh, mention my biggest laugh from this movie, and that's when Superman and Nuclear Man are fighting in space, and Nuclear Man just uh, freezes Superman <laughs> into, like, a big ice cube, icicle or whatever, and then just blows him away. <laughs> like, I thought that looked hilarious it was so bad but i loved it <laughs> there were lots of uh, weird decisions made in this movie a lot of uh, subplots that just don't go anywhere at all and i believe about a half an hour of this movie was cut out uh, of uh, this movie uh, and uh, this movie was uh, plagued with uh, production issues everywhere and <laughs> <laughs> And with this movie having a disastrous behind-the-scenes production issues going all over the place, it definitely shows in the film, where in Superman 2, sure, there were a lot of production issues, but it didn't ruin the film, whereas in this movie, it kind of does. It shows, really. Like, this movie is not finished even in the slightest. Like, it needed, like, at least a few more years before it would even be, like, good enough to release, and even then, what you have to work with isn't great. And that's about all I have to say about Superman 4 The Quest for Peace. It was terrible, but kind of funny. The action scenes kind of save it for me. And there was some nice, cheesy, dumb, stupid fun to be had in this movie in terms of laughing at the movie. 
So if you're looking for a funny bad movie, this is not a bad uh, choice to pick. <laughs> I would rewatch it. It was funny enough for me to want to see again. <laughs> <laughs> so with all that being said, I'm going to give Superman 4 The Quest for Peace a 1 out of 10. Like a funny bad 1 out of 10 movie. Like unironically, there's basically nothing good in this movie. But as far as ironic enjoyment goes, it's fun. <laughs> like, I can come back to this movie. It's nice, it's short, and it just gives you what you would want, if that makes sense. Thank you for watching my videos. As always, if you enjoyed this review, be sure to leave a like and comment down below. You thought of Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, and my social media links. They will all be in the description, so follow me there. And last but not least, subscribe to be part of Fully Nation, and I'll see you when I get my next review up, and that is going to be for... A film that I have not seen in almost 20 years, because that's when it came out. <laughs> I'm sure I've rewatched it since then, but even then, that would be like 15 years-ish. And that is, uh, you probably guessed it, Superman Returns. So look forward to that, but until I get that up, thank you for watching and have a great day.